In this video, we're gonna outline the differences of general stores and one product stores, obviously using Shopify. Now, I'll explain what each is, the benefits and the drawbacks of each approach, and I'll also compare which one's better and why. I did, however, forget to turn my mic on when I recorded this, so I apologize in advance for the not so amazing audio quality. Hopefully it doesn't affect your experience watching it too much. Just know that the info and the insight in this will be worth it. Within dropshipping, the two most dominant models are the general store and the one product store. So in this video, we're gonna dive deep into the understanding of both and explore both the pros and cons. And in my opinion, which is better and why? And I'm actually gonna give you a recommendation of like how to start and which one's better for you. So the one product store is obviously exactly how it sounds. It's just you selling one product okay you're not selling anything else it's just the one product now the benefits of a one product store are that there's the niche market penetration right so with a one product store you can cater to a specific underserved market niche assuming that you find that of course you can cater your marketing and really target it down so it becomes streamlined to a specific audience segment that you've obviously got mastered you have a lot of data on you know their trends and what they're interested in and on top of that, as you even like advertise more and more, if that's the route that you're going, or if you're even doing like organic on TikTok, Pinterest, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, whatever, you're going to get better and better and better at it because you're really, really only focused on the one specific product and how to actually market that. There's also higher conversion rates, right? Since visitors aren't distracted by a myriad of products, conversion rates are typically higher. It's also extremely scalable if done correct, especially when running advertising, because you're gonna get a lot more feedback on your ads and a higher conversion rate on those ads often means scaling is a little bit more straightforward and will lead to lower ad costs because you'll really be able to hone them down. You can also brand really easily. It's easier to brand around a single product specifically than a general store, for example, where it's really just the broad niche. With a one product store, you can kind of build a brand around that. And if you decide to do influencer marketing, there's really that advantage as well, right? Because promotions with influencers become more focused and more effective if you can find the right people who already have an audience built around a specific thing that caters really well to your product. Like we covered when running advertising or even if you have a website pixel set up on Shopify, your feedback and your analytics are gonna become a lot more valuable with one product store. And clearly there's the customer service aspect of it as well and you can streamline your customer service to be really efficient around that one product because you can build systems to kind of answer frequently asked questions around it. You don't need to cater customer service to dozens or hundreds of products. You can really hone down again on one. Now, some of the drawbacks, of course, are that you have higher risk and these things need to be considered if this is the route you decide to go. Your entire store clearly hinges on that one product. And if your product fails, well, then your store fails and you're gonna to need to create an entirely new store. Just the same, there's flexibility limitations too, right? There's little room to pivot if your product doesn't perform well, and you're gonna to have to rebrand completely into an entirely new store, an entirely new product, and start back from scratch and step one. Again, sustainability concerns. If the demand for your single product wanes, if for example, you create a store around something that's trending and doing really, really well, but that trend dies off, well, your business dies off too. And there's also limited cross-selling, so there's no opportunity to promote complementary products or upsells because you only have that one product. Now, obviously, as you scale and you start to do really, really well, you can introduce other complementary products after that, but that does take time. That shouldn't be your focus in the beginning. All this compared to a general store, however, the benefits of a general store are that clearly you can cater to a wider audience because offering a range of products can attract a more diverse customer base. There's also the cross-selling opportunities that we just touched on that the one product store did not have, right? So you can always promote complementary products, which gives you a strategic advantage and upsell capabilities. On the contrary to the one pop, on the contrary to the one product store, you also have stability, right? So with the various products, the failure of one doesn't spell doom for your entire store. You can just pivot to another product that you're selling or even add a product to your store as long as it's within that given niche and just start there and nobody's gonna know. You don't need to rebrand, you don't need to create an entirely new store, and it really gives you a lot of flexibility because you can test different niches or sub-niches within that general niche, and you can definitely test 
a number of products within that as well. And one of my favorites is the long-term potential of it. So the ability that you have to adapt and pivot to new trends and test new products. If one product fails, for example, well, you can just pick up on another one that you think seems promising. It doesn't come without drawbacks though, right? Clearly with, at, clearly with a, a general store, you're gonna have branding difficulties or at least it'll be tougher in the beginning to create a brand around it because people won't necessarily know what it is that you sell. And crafting a unique brand identity can be challenging with a diverse product range like we covered. There's clearly also influencer challenges if you plan to go the influencer marketing route, right? So promoting a general store with influencers can be less effective because if you have somebody come land, land on a landing page of a general store and they notice that some of the products aren't catered to how they got there, they might be less likely to end up converting. And also your bang for buck when you're paying for an influencer is gonna go a lot further if you have a one product store and you find an influencer that caters specifically to that product. You also might have lower conversion rates, both in organic, but also in ads if you decide to run ads, right? So visitors might browse without a specific buying intent, and that's gonna to lead to lower conversion rates, which is gonna hurt you overall. On top of that, you also have increased competition and resource strains too. So with a broader focus, you'll likely face more competitors in the market, because you're not niche down, so you're competing with everybody in that broad market, which is clearly a disadvantage, and you're also gonna be competing with everybody in that broad market when you're running ads. And because of that, that can definitely strain both your marketing budget and your marketing strategy because you won't really be specialized around one thing. So all that said, my recommendation is to start with a general store within the same niche. So for example, like electronics or home decor or pet supplies, right? Whatever it is, general, broad, but within a specific niche, right? And then from there, you can test a bunch of different products within that same niche. And if one product fails, that's totally fine because you can just start testing the next one. Eventually you'll find the winner. And that's when you want to potentially take that winner to a brand new one product store and start trying to scale it there. Now you don't have to do that, but that's typically the formula that works for so many people. It is proven and I highly recommend that approach. So in the next lecture, we're gonna cover several examples of a general store and several examples of a one product store. So you can kind of get an idea of what each looks like and what they're potentially selling.